In this presentation, we will discuss auditing revenue. We're going to be discussing the revenue cycle and the approach of auditing the revenue cycle. First thing we want to consider is the revenue recognition principle, because obviously when we audit the revenue, the timing is going to be one of the major principles that we need to consider. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now, and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB-centered headphone because that frees up a USB port, and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials with the auditing of revenue we therefore have to understand the accrual principle as it relates to revenue that's the revenue recognition principle now this is going to be a fairly detailed revenue recognition principle because we want to see this step by step as we can apply it to the approach for auditing revenue so revenue recognition principle just in general terms we might just say that we're going to recognize revenue when it has been earned but we want as opposed to when cash is received. That's probably what most people would say as a revenue recognition principle. But we wanna be very specific in this and we wanna be able to apply this to different types of businesses as well because we may have some businesses that sell goods, inventory. We may have other businesses that have services. So revenue recognition principle, revenue can be defined as inflows or other increases of assets of an entity. So we're gonna say there's some kind of inflow. Does it have to be cash? Did we decide, did we define cash? here no because another inflow it could be accounts receivable for example going up as we make a sale on account of the entity or settlement of liabilities this is often something that is overlooked it's quite possible that we make a sale and instead of receiving something instead of getting some type of asset accounts receivable or cash we have something that is a, a liability that's relieved in some case reducing a liability now that's not normal a process that happens usually accounts receivable goes up or cash goes up but it's quite possible that we could uh, have a liability go down and that would still be revenue it should be in the definition of an entity from providing goods so goods or inventory providing services so we're having services which would be non-inventory related for a service type company or from activities that make up the entity's major operations so when we are considering revenue we're typically considering those major operations so for example, if we're in the business of selling some type of inventory and we actually happen to sell some stocks and bonds, some of our investments, we're not a financial company, but we sold stocks and bonds or we earned interest on stocks and the bonds and we had capital gains of some kind or interest income or dividend income, this would be another type of income, but it's not gonna be our principal revenue recognition in the operations of the business. So let's go through this one more time. Revenue can be defined as inflows or other increases in assets of an entity or settlement of liabilities of an entity from providing goods, providing services, or from activities that make up the entity's major operations. 
So what are we going to do in the auditing of the revenue approach within the auditing process? We're going to have to understand the business. What is it that they do in order to generate revenue? We're going to identify the contract with the customers. So what's going to be the contract that is involved with the customer with regard to revenue uh, recognition? What kind of contract is it? Is it goods or services that are being given? Uh, is it goods that are being given or services that are being given or some combination of the two? Identify the poor performance obligations in the contract. So what is the performance that has to be done? We need to know that because that's a major component to the revenue recognition principle because that's typically the point in time when the revenue should actually be recognized within the agreement. Determine the transaction price. So what's going to be the transaction price for uh, the contract that's being involved for the major operation of the business? Allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations in the contract. So we're going to allocate that out and then recognize revenue when the entity satisfies performance obligation, which of course is in alignment with our revenue recognition principle. Revenue recognition fraud risks. So as we go through this, we want to be considering the fraud risks. One type of fraud risk is side agreements. Side agreements are arrangements that are used to alter the terms and conditions of recorded sales. So we're going to be altering the terms and that's typically uh, not a good thing to do because it could be deceptive. That's where the fraud comes into place. So one more time, arrangements that are used to alter the terms and conditions of recorded sales in order to entice customers to accept delivery of goods and services. Then we have channel stuffing, which is a marketing practice that suppliers sometimes use to increase sales by incentivizing distributors to buy a substantially more inventory than they can promptly sell. And of course, we can imagine this happening at the end of the year. If you were, if you could, you could imagine a manager at the end of the year saying, I need to increase sales to this level because I want to get my bonus and I have to get over this level before the end of the year. The cutoff is at 1231. How can sales be increased? Well, maybe we can somehow incentivize our distributors to purchase more before the end of the year in some way. And, and they're going to purchase more than they otherwise would, thereby increasing the sales before the cutoff. Now, in the long term, of course, it's, it's not going to be a good thing because the increase in the sales and the cutoff would be uh, a, just a, a timing difference. So that would indicate that you would think that sales would decrease after the year and it kind of distorts basically uh, the numbers and it could actually decrease the amount uh, that is, is going to be sold because you might have to have some type of incentivization in order to incentivize someone to have the, the higher purchases, maybe by discounting and or hurt the relationship with uh, with the uh, distributors in that in that way by kind of uh, changing the normal terms related party transactions related party transactions transactions that are not considered at arm's length. So for example, if a company had something like a subsidiary and there were some type of related party transactions, the subsidiary being in some way owned or related to the parent company, you can imagine sales types transactions that would happen to the related party. That could be another way that a, that a manager or a company might try to manipulate or increase their sales by basically making sales to uh, related party at, at terms that aren't um, arm's length meaning they're not like normal market sales because they're at they're at related party uh level and then we have bill and hold sales bill and hold sales sales where the customer agrees to purchase the goods but the seller retains a uh, physical possession until the customer requests shipment so this is another thing that you can kind of imagine happening at the end uh, of the year you can say oh well what if there's going to be some type of sale that's going to be agreed upon but the the company is holding on to the inventory they don't have to actually distribute the inventory until after year end so you can imagine the cutoff date sale happens but the the uh company is holding on to the inventory not shipping it till after the cutoff date well typically uh the the sale should be recognized when the service is done when the work is done when that relates to inventory goods that's usually at the point in time that they have been shipped or at the point they have been arrived, whether it be FOB shipping or FOB uh, destination. So you can imagine this type of situation. Invoice goes out, accounts receivable goes up, sales goes up. They, they say, well, this, they have have purchased that has happened, but the inventory hasn't been shipped yet. And therefore, it's just basically on the books as a sale at that point. 
even though the transaction hasn't taken place. Revenue recognition process. So what's going to be the cycle for revenue recognition if we're selling goods? So if we sell inventory, we're going to have purchases. We're going to purchase the inventory that we're then going to mark up and sell. Then we're going to have the inventory. We're going to be tracking the inventory. And then, of course, we'll have cash sales. So this is the case. If we sell it for cash, we would have purchases. You can imagine them us holding on to the inventory and then putting it possibly into a store at which point we make sales for cash at the store point, And that would be our cycle. What if we had sales that were going to be made on account? We may have then purchases. We're then going to have the inventory that we're going to track. Then we're going to have credit sales. So now we have a sale. We can imagine basically a credit sale accounts receivable sale. We didn't get cash at the point in time of the sale. We expect to get cash sometime in the future. And then, of course, uh, that's going to be recording the accounts receivable now being involved. Now that we have this accrual process, accounts receivable, and then we're going to have the cash collection on the accounts receivable. So most of the time when we think about basically sales on account, this is the cycle. This is the more complex cycle we would have. If we make sales for cash, we would have a more simplified cycle looking like this. Type of transactions related to the revenue process. What kind of transactions are we going to be looking at? We're going to have the sales of goods or rendering of services for cash or credit. So obviously we're going to have the sales that will be taking place. These are going to be the transactions that we'll be testing. So when we consider revenue, we will be testing these transactions. Our focus is on revenue, but notice this full transaction that will be happening. Sales of goods or rendering of services, which will include revenue possibly cash and we'll talk about the accounts involved shortly receipt of cash from customers in payment for goods or services we also want to test the receipt of cash uh, from customers for uh, the goods and services and then we're going to have the return of goods by customers for credit or cash so this is the other thing that could happen the customer could come back and return the transaction so we basically, these are the transactions we're concerned with, with regard to revenue recognition. What are going to be the accounts then that we will be considering with regard to revenue recognition, the revenue process. Now, our main account is, is of course revenue, but as we test revenue, we're going to also be testing some of these other type of items to some degree or another, given the fact that we have to, as we test revenue, note that that could be a good thing because as we go through this testing process, as we go through these accounts, we will be testing uh, other types of accounts as we go, which means we can possibly do less testing once we get to those basically accounts and those transactions, because we would have already touched on them to some degree as we've been considering the revenue process. So then these are going to be the financial statement accounts that will be affected as we consider revenue. Then we're also going to be considering these type of accounts because they're involved in the transactions, the sales transaction will involve accounts receivable. If we make sales on accounts. Therefore, to some degree, as we test the revenue process, we will be testing accounts receivable. We'll have sales or revenue because obviously revenue will be involved in the sales transactions. Allowance for uncollectible accounts. This is going to be something that will be involved with accounts receivable as we consider the value of accounts receivable. The allowance for doubtful accounts will be part of that net value. And then, if, and then the bad debt expense representing those receivables that are not going to be collected that's important with regards to the revenue process because really those bad debt expenses are are sales that didn't really happen it's really kind of a negative sale that happened when someone says they're not going to pay us then the sale never really happened and we have this a bad debt expense is really kind of a negative sale in that sense so it's related to the sales transactions cash receipts transactions related to this revenue process we're going to be dealing with cash, either with the cash sales or with the receipt from sales on account, paying off the accounts receivable. So as we test, then the sales will also be testing cash. So we'll do some testing of cash. Of course, in that process, we will be concentrated on cash in and of itself. As we, as we test cash at that, at some point, we're testing the bank reconciliations and whatnot. But as we test revenue, we also look at cash to some degree at least on the deposit side of things. And then we have the uh, receivables, accounts receivables transaction because it will be going down as we collect cash on account. And then we'll have cash discounts as well that we'll have to consider with regards to cash transactions. Then we have sales returns and allowance transactions. 
So sales return and allowance. And this is gonna include the sales returns and the sales allowances. We wanna consider these at the same point in time as we consider the revenue process because although these are broken out as separate type of accounts and they act kinda of like expenses, they're really contra sales accounts. What that means if someone came back and said, hey, I'm giving the inventory back now, well, the sale never really happened then. It's, a re it's basically a reversal. So we don't usually decrease the sales account recall what we do instead is we make these other accounts with our, which are kind of like contra sales accounts. They're going to be uh, credit. They're going to be debit balance accounts that are basically revenue accounts that are debit balance contra revenue accounts. And that's going to be the sales returns and allowances. And then of course the accounts receivable also involved with uh, the sales returns.